Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to breakout session 4A with Dr. Ellen Lykin. This is the session where we will be talking about community use of the overdose data mapping application ODMAP. My name is Justin Perpar, a recent MPH grad from UK, and I will be moderating this session. And we'll introduce our speaker, Dr. Ellen Lykin. Ellen Lykin, Doctor of Public Health, is a University of Kentucky College of Public Health graduate. Employed by the CDC Foundation, she has served as the Public Health Analyst for Kentucky since February of 2020 in the Overdose Response Strategy. The ORS is an unprecedented and unique collaboration between public health and public safety created to help local communities reduce drug overdoses and save lives by sharing timely data, pertinent intelligence, and evidence-based and innovative strategies. Toward this mission, Ellen works on a variety of projects, including the statewide use of ODMAP. Um, I just ask if anyone has questions, save them to the end, and we will save them to the end. You can send them to me in the chat, and I will be sharing. Dr. Lykin has provided me with some outside resources, some links to some outside resources that I will provide in the chat as well. So without further ado, doctor, if you want to take it away. Thanks so much, Justin. Um, I want to welcome everyone to our 2022 Harm Reduction Summit here in Kentucky and for attending the Community Use of the Overdose Data Mapping Application, or ODMAP. And I'll just take a minute and ask that you please keep our folks in the eastern part of the state and the western part of the state and in the middle too, but um, in your prayers as they still struggle after um, tornadoes and flooding. Um, I am Ellen Lykin. I am the Kentucky Public Health Analyst for the Overdose Response Strategy. I'm going to first go through our housekeeping slides. This is my federal acknowledgement. My presentation is supported by the CDC and U.S. Department of Health and Human Services as part of a financial assistance award. Um, the contents are those are mine and not necessarily represent uh, the official views of or an endorsement of the CDC or HHS or the US government. I have no financial relationships to disclose. And we just know that we need access to timely actionable data on drug overdose. And so um, that's our educational needs. And our objectives, we want you to be able to identify suspected overdose occurrences and spikes in near real time, um, evaluate the role of community members to enforce the need to know rule, and we're going to describe community use of ODMAP data. All right. So um, as Justin mentioned, the overdose response strategy um, was born in collaboration of the Office of National Drug Control Policy, which is the ONDCP, and CDC. And they wanted to bring together public health and public safety to address overdose in the U.S. In the last year, the ORS has funded through the CDC Foundation and the High Intensity Drug Trafficking Areas, the HIDAs, um, and this is, I'm sorry, acronym rich, <laughs> but at, at least one public health analyst and one drug intelligence officer in every state, plus the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. I have been lucky enough to be the PHA in Kentucky for two and a half years. Um, I, as Justin mentioned, am a graduate of the University of Kentucky, and I have deep family ties in northeastern Kentucky. I've lived here for more than 30 years, and I am just really proud to be the public health analyst for Kentucky. Um, I work closely with the Drug Overdose Technical Assistance Corps, which is part of KIPRIC, the Kentucky Injury Prevention Research Center. And as you can see by the slide, I currently don't have a drug intelligence officer for the state. We're looking to fill the role as Greg Cox has, Cox has taken another position at the Appalachia Haida. So 
So um, just a, another little over overview, and, and this was mentioned in the beginning, ORS is unprecedented and unique collaboration, and we're really proud of it as we've grown. Um, the CDC Foundation is a nonprofit organization. It was created by Congress to do the work of the CDC, and I am seeing, and I'm sure you are too, more and more CDC Foundation employees across the state doing a lot of different public health work. Um, we were really excited this year because the ORS and ODMAP were both included in the National Drug Control Strategy from the Office of the President in July of 2022 as viable tools for communities and states. Our mission is to help communities reduce fatal and non-fatal overdose. And we really work to meet communities where they are. We wanna help them build strategies that are evidence-based, but fit within their community structure. We recognize that you know every community is not equal. We're different in size, um, in uh, the way our communities are structured and um, in the amount of money that is directed toward overdose response, even in viewpoints. So we try to work with communities to build in those areas in things like ODMAP and other areas as well. Um, since each state and territory is different in their governance and culture, the ORS has four overarching program strategies, and all the work supported by the ORS state teams fall under one of the four categories. Um, each PHA and DIO team has autonomy to work on what's needed, so that's just more about what it was just talking about. Um, we want to meet people where they're at, meet communities where they're at, so they can meet people who use drugs where they are at. All right, so ODMAP, it fits really well into the strategies outlined in my former slide. And um, it's one of the projects I've been really involved in um, in Kentucky for you know a couple of years. Um, and now, if you haven't heard, we, we have ODMAP live across the state in Kentucky. It went live in the last few months, um, but we have been working to get the bugs out of the system before we do uh, a formal rollout. And what does going live mean? It means that by working with the Washington Baltimore HIDA, which administers ODMAP and the Kentucky Board of EMS, which is KBEAMS, we were able to make a computer connection between the two data systems. And now the KBEAMS data um, feeds overdose information directly into ODMAP for nearly every EMS service in the state. This benefits our EMS partners. We have had some who've been um, entering in for a while uh, manually, but it frees up their valuable time and effort in our communities, and it provides the information in a more standard way for those in the communities who use the information. So why use it? Um, it's a tool that can tell you how many suspected overdoses there are in your area. So, you know, your community, your civic leaders, um, your health department, your law enforcement can um, understand what the problem is, how many suspected overdoses there are in your area, um, and you can address them as best as your district or your county or as your community can. In most states, including Kentucky, um, we have different groups in public safety and public health who address this problem. Um, but often in so doing, you know, we, we create silos that may make some difference, but can't address the problem fully. So public health can't solve it by themselves. Public safety can't. Retroactive data, which is really important, but it can't drive life-saving decisions. So ODMAP opens the door to build out across these silos and include our partners across the spectrum of, spectrum of public safety and public health so that we can work on this problem together, not duplicate our work and um, get some, some good things done.
So I know some of you have some knowledge or have seen this before, but I, I do want to get everyone up to speed. Um, or if you haven't been using ODMAP, you've known it's out there just to refresh you a little bit. But in the past, ODMAP use in Kentucky was by a few select entities who manually put EMS data in. And there were uh, about a dozen who uh, did it pretty regularly. We have a couple who did it, you know, quite religiously. Um, but the problem is we had about a dozen doing it, but we have 120 counties. We have around 200 EMS services that provide advanced life support. We have more EMS services than that. And in addition, we have 389 law enforcement agencies in the state. And that includes, you know, universities, correctional facilities, our sheriffs, our police, um, you know, our state police. And um, so that's a lot uh, that we are missing when we would look at OD map. Now, the Kentucky Department for Public Health and Kiprick provide us with really outstanding data. And, uh, you know, I, I want you to know I fully support that and um, it's great data. Um, but good epidemiologic data takes time. It takes time because they have to uh, wait on death records, which take time for, you know, to be processed. Um, and it, it just takes time to, to do all the the data work that needs to be done to make sure that the data is correct and pristine. Um, but to get near real-time data to inform community outreach, ODMAP provides suspected overdose information without waiting, or at least without waiting too long. Right now, we're about 10 days behind. We're hoping to correct that. Um, it isn't perfect data. It is suspected data but it does give us enough information to get out into our communities and be aware of overdose spikes. This map was created right before Kentucky went, went live. So they haven't um, really updated it yet because fast and furiously, uh, other states across the nation are also um, doing things like we have done here in Kentucky. Um, we had the 25th automatic, automated interface with our K-Beams connection, and we will be having a second interface with our law, law enforcement coming soon. It's a little different, but we're really excited um, for that to come along. So these are the program goals of OD map. Um, and I don't like to read slides, but you know, it's near real-time surveillance. Um, it gives you the data you need to identify suspected overdose occurrences and spikes in near real time. It helps you to develop effective strategies and it enhances the development of regional strategies to prevent the spread of substance use disorder. Um, and, you know, so one of the important maybe side effects of, of these program goals is that it helps us to, um, to work within our communities to build those bridges to take down those silos. And also not only in our own community, but in our surrounding communities as well. All right, um, we have a lot of support for ODMAP nationally. Um, the BJA and CDC um, provide funding to eight states to increase ODMAP engagement. Um, the CDC's OD2A or Overdose Data to Action grants, which um, are in different places in the state and Kiprick uh, has a, a grant here in Kentucky. Um, this is one of the key strategies and it's under strategy uh, eight. 
there um, there was there have been challenges because of the depth of information that's available as far as HIPAA goes, but all challengers uh, have released opinions of support, and that includes the attorneys general general's offices of South Carolina, Maryland, and Nevada. In several states have implemented legislation requiring agencies to report overdose events into ODMAP. So each entry requires four elements. And we have to have these in order for there to be a point put on the map, need date and time, the location of the event, the outcome, and naloxone administration, and that can be unknown uh, as far as naloxone administration goes. And there are some additional information uh, pieces that can be added. I want you though to be wary of suspected drug that is added a lot of times, but that is not based on toxicology in most cases. And I think in Kentucky, probably about all cases. Um, and so that is either self-report of someone who's overdosed or the um, what the EMS professional is witness to. Since polydrug use is quite common and also uh, lacing of other drugs is common um, with fentanyl, we just don't always know that's that's what we're looking at. But just be aware of that. Since ODMAP is not considered a system of record, and as I said earlier, it has been challenged, and those challenges um, didn't, uh, you know, turn into anything. It collects location, date and time, fatality status, and naloxone administration. It's not considered to be protective health information. The location is geocoded directly. Uh, it, when, as soon as that goes in and the uh, address information is purged by the system. So it is not kept. And the Zoom function only goes so far. Um, although, you know, you can get a really good idea of where something occurred. This is really um, important information um, since we now can have widespread use of ODMAP. Um, we really have to work to protect the information and the people who overdose. Um, so the agencies that are eligible to uh, view the national map um, are law enforcement agencies, criminal justice personnel, public health personnel, first responders, hospitals with emergency departments, and all agencies must sign a participation agreement prior to gaining access. And all that's outli outlined in the um, policies and procedures, and you can um, get that information offline at odmap.org. Um, I will say that after agencies um, have access, they can allow others to view the information. And, and those may be people who input information or different programs that will use the information. Just be aware as if you are an administrator that um, you want to be sure that the people who are looking at the information are working to um, working in this problem and, and, you know, with their due diligence. For instance, in a health department, maybe everyone in the health department who works there, although they're public health workers, um, have, you know, do that kind of work. They don't all need access to it. You only need the people who maybe are working in an SSP or working in um, overdose response in some way to necessarily see the MAP information. But that said, as far as reporting out, you can take um, some of the graphing um, you know, abilities 
and uh, share those. You can create documents and share with the information you find, um, just not the depth of information on, on the map. All right, so, and that leads us into the need to know rule. Um, so if I were a professor, I'd be saying, and this is what's gonna be on your test. I told you we were gonna talk about it in the beginning, uh, <laughs> but um, you need to follow the need to know rule when you are adding people in um, to use it. Um, it's just not meant for general public or media as far as um, looking at the map. So restrict your access to images especially with individual points. So if you are sharing the map, make sure everyone in the room is someone who is working in this area. Um, if you're recording, I wouldn't show the map in a meeting. And when in doubt about any of your data that you want to share, reach out to the data owners. Um, it is not intended to be a system of record. We have good epi data. We have Kiprick data. We have Department for Public Health data, um, this data is meant as a call to action to get our, help, our helpers out to those in need. And if you have any specific questions, you can reach out to Allie Burrell. She's at the Washington Baltimore Haida, but of course you can always reach out to me. There is also, and we'll share the link later on Kiprick's website, there is an OD map page. And there is a place to um, send in questions. And usually I or another member of um, the team will be answering this. So our ODMAP tools. This is a mock-up of the national map. It is not real. It's just to show us um, what it looks like um, when you open it. The query box is on the right. And uh, on the right-hand side, there are other small boxes. Um, the top one is search. And as you see, the third one down looks like an arrow. That's how you can um, move that box out of the way if you need to, after you have um, set your filters. But this is where you're gonna set your filters um, by selecting state, selecting counties in that state, um, your date and time. Um, you know, there are other features there that you can't see right now, but um, you're able to do that so that you can um, narrow that down where you need to. So as we look in closer, you can see that there are diamonds and there are circles. The diamonds are fatal overdoses and the circles are non-fatal overdoses. The colors, which we'll talk about in a little bit, have to do with the amount of naloxone that was received. So these are the 24-hour default statistics, um, or in um, the case of this map, they actually, um, if you saw earlier, there was, uh, they had set the date as May 1st, 2017 to November 1st, 2021. Um, and so these are the mock numbers for that. But if you just open up the, nas the national map, you're gonna see this and that's gonna be the last 24 hours. If you want to look, let's say the month of June in Kentucky, um, and you set that in your query, then these numbers will um, reflect whatever dates you have set. All right, you can filter um, by state and county, as I said, dates. Some of the other choices are um, naloxone use, whether something is fatal or non-fatal. And so after you would fill those things in, after you selected Kentucky and selected your county, if you want to do that, then you hit the apply filter button at the top. 
You can also use the heat map. And then, of course, there's a clear filter button there. On the upper left, there are graph, graph and chart choices um, on each overdose based on your chosen filter. Um, and you can uh, look at uh, outcome, which is um, fatal or non-fatal. You can, as I say, look at naloxone use. You can look by um, day or month. So you can see um, for the month of June, if there is a day of the week that seems there seems to be more overdoses. Lots of things that you're able to look at by doing that. And the colors that are, are here um, depict the amount of naloxone, as I said earlier. So you can see by looking at this, um, the four colors to, uh, or the three colors to the left are non-fatal. And um, the first is non-fatal, no naloxone. The teal is single dose. The purple is multiple dose. The red is fatal, no naloxone. And um, other is zero in this graph, but next to it, um, the dark gray is fatal, naloxone unknown. And then next to it is non-fatal, naloxone unknown. And as you can see, this is the type of graph you would get if you looked at day of week or hour of day, those types of things. So the features is the national map. And um, honestly, that's the thing that gets people excited to, to look at. Um, you can, you have, you know, cross jurisdiction, uh, suspected event information. You can see if um, if you know that, for instance, um, Lexington has a, a large increase that usually your county increases a day or two later. Or you can watch those things and see, and that may give you more of a heads up of what's going on. And of course, you can filter as we've talked about the heat maps in the chart. You can set spike overdose and statewide alerts, which we're gonna talk about. And you can add personal data um, and uh, mapping software web layers for your own use if, if you choose to do that. Um, this is just showing uh, what a spike alert uh, looks like, uh, what the email looks like when when this comes out, and this is just um, an idea of, of the map of, of how things uh, occur when you have your spike. Um, you set a, a you know a, you preset a threshold within a twenty four hour window, so that would um, elicit a response, and um, you would have your spike alert initiated. Um, and then there is communication following, which is like what you see here in the, on the right side. Um, and you can set what those alerts say and who they're sent to. Um, and then you can also set it to send um, additional email alerts um, as overdoses remain or go above the threshold. And then the spike will end. Um, and there is a um, notification also sent out. The spike alerts are set by administrators of the system. And um, so they can decide, um, although uh, ODMAP will help you based on what your history is uh, in your area of overdoses, um, what that's going to be. I will say that since it is new um, and we've just been on uh, we have a couple of months of information in there that, um, you know, look at that number that the that OD map selects for you and see if indeed you think that is an adequate number. You may play with it a little bit and just have an alert sent to you um, just to see how it works. Um, you're not going to hurt anything if you do that, and then you can change it as you need to. Just, you know, make sure that you, 
if you're having it sent to others that they understand it's a testing phase as well, but don't be afraid to test it. This is uh, just a case um, on the outcome of a spike alert in Arlington County, Virginia. And as you see here, surrounding areas were contacted and other spikes were identified. Um, the stakeholders were able to draft an alert to help in our response. So that's one way that they used a spike alert um, was to um, uh, you know, supply uh, a fact sheet of information about what was going on to some of their uh, community partners. Um, we've, you know, talked a lot of, over the last couple of years, and you may have heard me speak about this before, but um, about building strong stakeholder groups. And so this is the importance of them. Um, you know, it's, it's very important to, to work together across public health and public safety to do so. And if you're having difficulty doing that, you can let me know and I will um, help you with some tools to, to do that um, and you know, see if we can't work on that. We have some great examples across the state of um, public health and public safety working together. And I can always um, help you to reach out to some of those groups as well. Um, and, uh, you know, the ORS is always working to, to find ways across the nation to get um, public health and public safety to talk to each other. So we may have some ideas for you because this is, is just really important part of, of working in ODMAP and understanding what the problem is. Um, outreach teams are a great way um, to use ODMAP as well. Um, you use those to identify cases in your um, jurisdiction. Now, as I said earlier, there's not any personal information in ODMAP. Um, but what we have found in some of our uh, QRT counties um, is that you make these relationships and sometimes this information can be shared. And um, there are communities doing that and there are ways to do it. So um, another thing for us to do is work on that. Um, so our, our QRTs in the state, if you're interested in creating one, I would recommend contacting um, CORE, which is the Kentucky Overdose Response Effort. Um, but this is something that uh, you, as, as you gain this information, um, is, you're going to have to find out if you want to do the door-to-door the -door type information because ODMAP does not retain the address information. Um, but there are other options as well. Uh, we have mobile units in the state and, um, you know, parking nodes in certain areas are often um, very effective ways as well of getting information out to folks. All right. Um, so getting started with OD map. Um, there is a, a web link for that that we're going to be posting. Um, it is, uh, you will find this um, request agency access document. It is an online document. Um, and what you do to fill this out, um, you of course provide the agency name, the type, um, and this is kind of an application to make sure that you fit into the type of organization that um, gets access to ODMAP. Um, and then you need, um, you're going to have a participation agreement to sign. So you have to provide the name of a person in your organization who has the legal authority to sign off 
for the agency. So if that's your public health agency, then that's going to be the director, um, something like that. If you have questions about that, I'll be happy to help you. Um, but what will happen is you will name that person. You will also uh, name an agency administrator. The administrator is the person who keeps um, the OD map healthy in that they add um, folks to use it or to look at the data. They delete folks if they're no longer employed or if their employment has changed in some way um, and make sure there aren't you know, duplicates, things like that. Um, they are just the overseer of the OD map for your organization. So what will happen is when you turn this in and the Washington Baltimore HIDA um, approves it, then the signatory for your organization is going to receive within one to three days a participation agreement that they will have to sign and turn back in before um, you will have access. And as soon as that's done, then your administrator um, can begin adding users. You would also be given um, the agency code. Each uh, agency using it has their own uh, code and you have to have that, uh, users have to have that in order to request permission. So how do we use the data? And um, I have more links here that uh, link to these things, but um, you know, consider your data sources, your partners and resources when identifying how to make the data actionable. Um, the CDC has an evidence-based strategies for preventing overdose. And um, you can go and, and look at that document uh, also, there are different organizations that have set up uh, good spike frameworks if you are interested in setting uh, spike alerts for your area, um, and I have links to those as well. Here in the state, we also, um, using another system, our uh, Kiprick is setting up a, a spike alert system. Um, that can be used in conjunction with this or can be used in, in lieu of this um, either way. But if you do want to set them up, um, there are ways to do that and these organizations can help you do that. Um, using um, targeted interventions and overdose response, um, you know, you can have targeted education and naloxone distribution, as I said, um, by parking a mobile van or, you know, setting up a, a booth of some sort, leave behind programs, setting up vending machines. We have some uh, communities in the state that are interested in doing that right now. Um, buying or creating nalox boxes, um, that is happening across our state. Um, you know, to provide MOUD um, access to providers um, and support services. We do have a good Samaritan law in the state of Kentucky um, to increase, um, you know, uh, naloxone and MOUD um, during incarceration or upon release. Having our syringe service programs um, that's very important and understanding that this can inform those of what's going on and, and they can inform each other, actually. Um, so we know when there are spikes in providing fentanyl test strip distribution um, and promoting awareness or increased connection to all these um, wonderful things, peer support services, crisis intervention teams or our QRTs to make available first responder supports and please, you know, we we need to think about them when we have these overdose spikes and yes, you know, we have our people who use drugs and, um, and we are working so hard to help them, but our uh, first responders have so much stress over this as well. 
I've talked to a, a couple of, of county first responders recently, and, and this is very difficult for them for emergency room workers as well. Um, and then integrate your spike response with rapid response strategies. So ODMAP is a tool for engagement. Um, it, and that means that it's to get people in your community working together um, to fight this epidemic. And, um, you know, these are just some things for you to consider um, as you are looking at the ODMAP implementation. Um, you know, in understanding who has what role. Um, we we have so few public health workers across the state. We need to find out who's doing what and not necessarily duplicate services, finding the best way to provide all the services we can. And again, um, I, I will provide you with some resources on, on these things. Um, some of them I mentioned earlier um, in, in the ODMAP data privacy uh, guidance document that they do speak of. I will be presenting a training for administrators, um, hopefully in September. Um, so folks in the state, please watch for that. Um, please visit the Kiprick website for more information. Uh, if you had a uh, OD map uh, access at one time, but you find you can't log in, let me know and um, we'll see if you know we can get that reset for you. I also found out this week um, some of the OD map resources from the Washington Baltimore Haida um, are a bit out of date. You may see they talk about level one and level two um, users. They, they no longer use that um, type of setup. So they have put some new videos on their YouTube channel. And if you go to odmap.org, uh, you can see how to get onto their YouTube channel and, and what they have available. Um, they are continually putting up uh, new information. But um, if something is confusing, reach out to me or to them and um, we'll be happy to help. Um, I want to thank you for listening today, and I am happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Dr. Lykin. Um, do have a couple questions. So uh, if you wouldn't mind for, for Ridge Wilson, would you reiterate how to get the agency code for ODMAP? Okay. Um, so Ridge, if you are looking, um, if your agency already has access and you just want to be a user, you need the agency code. So what you would need to do is contact the administrator in your agency that has access to ODMAP and they can provide that for you. Um, if your agency does not have access yet, um, then I would recommend going to um, odmap.org and there is a, a bar on that page that says uh, request agency access and um, you can fill out the form there and then you will be provided with an agency code. But the administrator should always have that code and if they need it updated, I can provide them with the information to, to get what that code is. And then Martin Hensley asks, does, OD, does the ODMAP filter duplicate reports of the same event, i.e. if multiple agencies respond to a single event and each one submits a report? That's a great question. Um, so ODMAP does have the ability to, um, to get rid of duplicates. So if, if the automated system um, puts in a dot and then um, someone manually enters, the manual entry gains precedence and is what is shown. If though there is a mistake made um, that is further than I believe 600 feet difference in um, the 
uh, in the address, then um, it will produce a duplicate and that can be taken care of manually. And then last question, Jessica Stowe asks, do you know if any of any mil do you know if any military agencies provide input into OD now? I do not I do not believe they do. Um, I, I don't think they do in Kentucky. I know that we work closely with um, in other areas with our state National Guard, but as far as um, someone on the base uh, or any of our bases here in the state, I do not believe they do at this time. And they do not report to um, the state anyway, um, since it is federal government. So they would need to be approached individually. And with that, that was the last question. Um, we have the session until 2.15. If anyone has any more questions, I would just like to remind everybody that I have put the links to the resources Dr. Lichen provided into the chat. And however, if no one else has questions, we will conclude. Just wanna say thank you to those that did ask. Thank you all to your- Thank your you. Um, Thank you for your participation and a big, big thank you to Dr. Lichen for taking the time to talk to us and walk us through OD map and teach us a few things. Yeah. Let me know anyone if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to help. Um, Dr. Lichen, if you don't mind, yep. sure. I can throw your uh, email address in the chat for anybody. Yeah, if that'd be there. great. Okay, excellent. Okay, I will get it in there. But other than that, thank you, everybody. And thank you again, Dr. Lichen. Thank you. And then as an aside, Evan just sent the link in the chat for connection to the main session for the closing keynote.